Hello and welcome to today's lecture on dynamic instruction scheduling. Earlier we have discussed in detail about the static instruction scheduling which is done with the help of compiler and we have discussed its limitation and today we shall start our discussion on dynamic instruction scheduling and we shall see what are the advantages and disadvantages. And he here is the outline of uh, today's lecture. First I shall discuss about the need of dynamic instruction scheduling, why it is necessary and we shall see uh, it is a kind of data flow execution and which allows you out of order execution and particularly in this lecture I shall discuss about a technique known as scoreboarding which was developed for CDC 6600 and of course uh, for CDC 6600 the scoreboard will be quite complicated to discuss in a classroom. So, a simplified version uh, that is the scoreboard for MIPS processor which we have introduced earlier has been considered and we shall discuss the scoreboard for MIPS which is uh, simplified, but it will definitely highlight the important characteristics of the scoreboarding because uh, both MIPS as well as CDC 6600 are based on load store architecture and we shall see the four stages of scoreboard control and three components of scoreboard and illustrate the uh, scoreboard operation with the help of an example. <coughs> Again this is the kind of recap, we have seen that primitive pipeline processor tries to overcome data dependencies through interlocking that means whenever there is a hazard it stalls the processor which brings down pipeline efficiency. And we have al uh, also discussed a, an approach which is known as forwarding which is a hardware based approach where we have seen operands are read not from the actual register, but from the pipeline register and with the help of that the data dependencies uh, that are the stalls due to data dependencies are minimized or overcome. And we have also discussed scheduling of instructions, software scheduling, ordering the execution of instructions in a program so as to improve the performance. We have seen how the data dependencies can be uh, overcome or reduced by instruction scheduling and particularly software based instruction scheduling, scheduling we have already discussed which can be done with the help of a compiler. And I have mentioned that the software based instruction scheduling is handicapped due to inability to detect many dependencies at compile time because since it is uh, trying to detect dependencies at compile time which will not arise. Uh, I mean which cannot be detected what will happen at run time and as a consequence uh, its usefulness is very limited or restricted. And particularly uh, in the context of super, super scalar architecture we shall discuss about this uh, dynamic instruction scheduling the need is arising because of you can see. Uh, the, the various stages of superscalar processor, it will have fetch stage, decode stage, dispatch stage, execute stage, complete stage and retire stage. And as you can see the first part fetch, decode and dispatch up to this it is in order. By that in order I mean the order in which instructions are appearing in the program in the same order uh, they will be uh, uh, they will be read from the uh, program and uh, it will be dispatched and then it will be stored in a register known as issuing buffer. So, it is a multiple entry register and here there is a possibility of out of order uh, issue that means uh, the order in which instructions appear in a program that can be changed and instructions which appear in the program order at a later point uh, at a later than another instruction which may be issued for execution earlier. 
so it will lead to out of order issue and uh, up the execution will be done with the help of uh, different a number of functional units since it is superscalar processor we shall be having multiple functional unit and most those multiple functional units will have different amounts of latencies the latencies of different functional units will not be same the time needed for uh, fixed point addition uh, cannot be same as that of floating point multiplication or floating point addition and as a consequence you will see the execution outputs will be generated uh, out of order. So, in out of order issue will lead to out of order execution and what will be done they will be stored in a buffer called completion buffer and completion buffer will allow you to again uh, produce the result in a in, in a kind of in order fashion. So, that the results ultimately which is stored in the register or the status of the program is changed in such a status of the processor is changed in such a way that it will appear as if the instruction execution has taken place in order. So, that is done with the help of uh, you know after the completion of instructions they are stored in a stored buffer and then they, they are retired that means written into the register uh, the way uh, the instructions have appeared in the program order. So, this is how the superscalar pipeline design will take place and these various functionalities that I have mentioned will be implemented with the help of hardware. So, uh, particularly uh, uh, this um, uh, dynamic instruction scheduling is, uh, is very important in the context of multiple instruction issue which is done in superscalar processor and uh, the issue stage can be replicated pipeline or it can be both. <coughs> Uh, here, uh, how it can be done for a CISC processor is illustrated. Uh, as I have already told, the the techniques that I have been I, I, we are discussing is applicable to RISC processors having load store architecture. However, this this approach can also be used to CISC processor with some modification in the hardware how is, is it done is shown in this particular uh, diagram. Here you have got uh, x86 instructions, then you have got a superscalar decode unit and a, uh, a superscalar translate unit. So, that instruction decode uh, stage has been divided into two components and then the complex instructions are decomposed into simple risk like micro operations. That means, the uh, a single uh, H086 uh, instruction will be de decomposed into more than one simple risk like of a micro operations. Those micro operations are sent to the dispatch unit. So, you can see here we are not exactly executing the instructions of the uh, complex uh, the complex instructions as it appears in x86. So, uh, to the dispatch unit various micro operations or risk like operations are being sent which can be issued which can be issued to the uh, multiple functional units and uh, by the dispatch unit. So, this multiple functional unit will then execute the instructions and obviously, here the order can be different. So, this is the uh, that in order retire unit which will uh, ultimately uh, produce result and store in the register the way uh, the instructions have appeared in the program order. So, this is the in order retire unit. So, you can see uh, how complex instructions uh, I mean CISC processors uh, can be adopted uh, to this approach. I mean where you can use uh, this uh, risk like uh, dynamic instruction scheduling. Okay. <coughs> now, this dynamic uh, instruction scheduling is based on a very simple idea that is known as data flow computation. What is the basic concept of data flow computation? 
basic concept it execute an instruction as soon as its operands are available. You see you have got a functional unit. This functional unit will require two operands, possibly that, that will come from two resistors R i and R j. Since we are considering uh, risk processor having load and store architecture, load store architecture. So, the operands will be coming source of the operands are two resistors R i and R j. The basic idea in this dynamic instruction scheduling is as soon as these operands are available in these resistors, execute it, pro provide it to the functional unit or ALU and get it executed. So, this is the basic idea of data flow computation and you may have heard of uh, 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 the data flow machine which was proposed by Professor Arvind. So, there also he used somewhat similar concept, but here it is done for dynamic instruction scheduling. That means, it is based on the, uh, execute an instruction as soon as its operands are available. So, uh, it is very easy to say this, but it is hard to implement. That means, uh, when the operands are available in the resistors you have to identify the process the hardware has to identify and uh, as the instruction execution is progressing it has to closely monitor various buses operations being performed by different functional units to keep track of when the operands are uh, i mean execution of some i mean operation is complete and it is going to write into a resistor and as soon as it is written into a register and if it is a source register, it knows that the uh, it is available in the register. And so, if both the operands are available, that execution can be started. So, it has to be done this way. So, uh, and whenever you do it, this will allow an instruction behind a stall to proceed if it is if it itself uh, and not stalled due to dependency. That means, uh, we have already discussed about the uh, data dependency, particularly the true data dependency. In case of true data dependency, what happens? A particular uh, instruction will produce a output, which will be consumed by used by a uh, subsequent instruction. So, in such a case, obviously, uh, there is no alternative but to stall due to data dependency. However, there are situations where uh, some instructions are not data dependent, I mean uh, there is no true data dependency. For example, in this example, you have got three instructions divide D uh, double F 0 comma F 2 comma F 4 add double F F 10 comma F 0 comma F 8. Obviously, the first two instructions that means add D has true data dependency on divide D. So, because it is producing a result which will be available in the register F 0, which will be used by the subsequent instruction at D. However, if you look at it, the sub D has no true data dependency on the uh, previous two instructions. That means, the first two instruction, this third instruction is not uh, dependent, data dependent on the first two. However, as you can see, uh, it is the second instruction is reading from a resistor and third instruction is also reading from a resistor. So, although there is no dependency that means, uh, it this, this can uh, what can be done in such a situation after divide D, it is possible to execute uh, this instruction uh, that sub D. So, uh, uh, in place of add D, you can execute sub D. So, that will lead to out of order execution and, uh, and obviously, this will lead to out of order completion, but this out of order execution and out of order completion 
will lead to the other type of hazards that read after write hazard is, is because of true data dependency, but the other type of hazards may arise even when there is no true data dependency. So, you have to overcome the other type the other two types of hazard whenever you allow this out of order execution or out of order completion. <coughs> now, here here is some kind some kind of uh, convention and instruction is considered to be an execution between the time it begins execution and be, and its completes execution. So, we, we shall say that instruction is in execution uh, when it begins execution uh, between the time it begins execution and it completes execution. So, in a dynamically scheduled pipeline all instructions pass through is to is issue stage in order as I have already mentioned. So, it leads to in order issue, but it may lead to uh, out of order execution as I have told. Uh, the advantage of dynamic scheduling is that can handle dependencies unknown at compile time. I have already mentioned that dependencies involving memory references which cannot be detected at compile time, but at run time you know that uh, a particular value uh, that, 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 means that means will be written into a register from a particular uh, memory location. So, the that effective address that is being generated can be same, but the instruction may look different. So, as a consequence this kind of dependencies can be handled by dynamic scheduling and uh, one another very important consequence is that compiler is simplified, it leads to a simplified compiler. And it also allows code compiled for one pipeline to run efficiently on a different pipeline. Now, whenever we go for static instruction scheduling, that is static instruction scheduling has to do instruction scheduling for a particular pipeline in mind. Now, if the pipeline is changed, that code compatibility is lost. That, so that that program cannot be executed in another processor having different pipeline. But in this case, whenever you go for dynamic instruction scheduling, that problem does not arise because that instruction scheduling and all these things you are doing at runtime. So if the pipeline in pipeline is changed, that hardware will automatically take care of it. And another another approach which I shall discuss later on that hardware speculation which are used in modern processors can be used in dynamic instruction scheduling which cannot be done in, uh, in, the, in, the, in static instruction scheduling. And this uh, particularly this hardware speculation is used to improve the performance of the processor and uh, this can uh, lead to further performance advantages builds on dynamic scheduling. Uh, that means, later on when I shall discuss hardware speculation, we shall see that it cannot really, uh, it cannot be based on uh, uh, that static instruction scheduling. It has to be based on, it, it builds on actually dynamic instruction scheduling. And there are two uh, popular schemes which are available for dynamic instruction scheduling, which have been, which were developed for two different very popular processors. First one is known as scoreboarding. So, this scoreboarding was first used for uh, back in 1964. So, in those days uh, there was no uh, concept of software and known I mean that concept of software pipelining was not known and obviously, the instruction level parallelism were, were restricted only. Uh, to the basic block and in those days uh, that uh, cache memory and other things are also not present. So, even in those days uh, they developed a technique known as scoreboarding and, and they, they, that was done for CDC 6600 computer. Of course, that CDC 6600 computer has got a large number of functional units, 
Levin function in it, but later on we shall explain score body. Actually, they, the score boarding name has been taken from this processor CDC 6300. They gave the name score board for this particular uh, hardware based dynamic scheduling approach. And later on, uh, for IBM 360 390 in 1966, another uh, uh, approach was developed by Thomas Lowe. Thomas Lowe was a scientist working in IBM and he developed uh, that this approach, uh, this dynamic instruction scheduling approach for IBM 360 by 91. This IBM 360 91 was a very popular uh, machine and this approach was developed particularly for improving the performance of floating point units. And both of these approaches I shall discuss one after the other, but to start with let me focus on scoreboarding because it is a uh, little closer to in order execution and then later on I shall discuss about this Thomas Lowe's approach which uh, allows you out of order execution and out of order completion. <coughs> Now, uh, scoreboarding is a technique to allow instructions to execute out of order when there are sufficient resources and no data dependence. That means, scoreboarding checks two things. Number one is structural hazard. structural hazard. That means, structural hazard is because of limited resources available in the processor. So, uh, if resources are not available, obviously then an instruction cannot be scheduled. So, uh, structural hazard is overcome by looking at uh, the uh, resources available in the processor. And second thing is that it also checks data dependency, true data dependency. So, whenever there is true data dependency, then also instruction is solved. However, what it does in both the cases, if, an, if enough resources are not available or if there is a data dependency, if an instruction is waiting for result generated by a already scheduled instruction, then it will be also stalled. So, the way it uh, resolves is by stalling <coughs> and WAR and WAW hazards that did not exist in in order pipeline can arise in dynamic schedule processors as I have al already mentioned. The goal is to maintain an execution rate uh, of one instruction per cycle that was the uh, basic objective of the scoreboarding. That means, uh, uh, it will overcome WAR and WAW hazards which can uh, arise in this uh, approach and of course, uh, basic goal is to maintain execution rate of one instruction per uh, cycle. So, in this particular case, every instruction goes through a special hardware known as scoreboard and scoreboard constructs the data dependencies of the instructions and uh, that means, it, it, it maintains a kinds of database and the, with the help of database, it maintains the data dependencies and uh, it can decide only when uh, there is no data dependencies, it will allow any instruction to execute. That means, operands are available in the register. So, another thing I should tell you that uh, you know uh, scoreboarding did not allow forwarding. That means, we have already earlier discussed the concept of forwarding, where the intermediate results are taken from the pipeline register before the results are written to the register. But in this case, you will see it is uh, the, the results are taken from the registers itself, not from the pipeline register. That means, the bypassing or forwarding technique is not uh, used in the context of scoreboarding. 
and scoreboarding also controls when an instruction can write its result into the destination register. That means, whenever you uh, 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 the data has to be uh, written into a register, it will do the writing by avoiding the, the WAW type of hazards which can arise whenever you go for dynamic instruction scheduling. And this out of order execution requires multiple instructions to be in the execution stage simultaneously uh, achieved with multiple function uh, function and units along with pipe pipeline function and units. So, here actually there is no distinction between multiple functional unit or pipeline functional unit. Both multiple functional unit and pipeline functional unit allows you you know uh, issue of I mean execution of uh, more than one instruction simultaneously. So, for logically it they, they will give you the same result as we have already seen. So, in this context here it does not really matter whether uh, you are using multiple functional units or functional units or pipeline. So, all instructions go through the scoreboard which is a centralized control of issue, operand reading, execution and write back. That means, four operations like issue of instruction, reading of operand, execution of instruction and write back all these are controlled by a hardware which is known as scoreboard and all hazard detection is also centralized in the scoreboard. <coughs> and this is the hardware we are eagerly waiting for. Uh, as you can see uh, for the simplified MIPS uh, scoreboard uh, where you have got only uh, five functional unit. Uh, see that CDC 6600 has got 11 functional units for which scoreboard was developed, but this uh, MIPS uh, uh, processor the, the scoreboard which has been which will be explained has got 5 functional units, 2 floating point multipl multiplier, 1 floating point divider, floating point 1 floating point adder and 1 integer unit. And here is your register bank and you have got uh, these in, uh, uh, buses, various buses and various buses are available and this is the scoreboard which controls different functional units and also controls the registers. That means, control uh, reading of status, controlling the registers, controlling the functional units all are done with the help of a with the help of a centralized uh, hardware known as scoreboard. And to allow out of order execution, the, the uh, ID stage, ins instruction decode stage has been divided into two parts. The first part uh, is known as issue and uh, this issue hard issue stage will decode instructions, check for structural hazard and it will issue in order if the function units is free and no uh, write after write. That means, if there is no write after write hazard and uh, if the instructions can be I mean if the hardware is available issue will be performed. And the then read operands wait until no data hazard then read operands. That means, here the reading is also taking place with the help of I mean uh, that means, uh, it, it, it this reading operation can is also delayed uh, I mean until the all the hazards are overcome. And add the would stall uh, uh, that read operands and sub D could proceed with no stall. As you have already seen that, that three instruction example, uh, that means uh, that add D would stall read operands because of data dependency, but sub D could proceed with no stall because there is no data dependency. So, scoreboard allow instruction to execute whenever uh, that first two conditions are hold and not waiting for any prior instruction. So, it is allows the allowing you out of order execution. So, you can see here uh, it is instruction fetch then issue is being done and different functional units will take different time. And after the, uh, the read operations are performed execution is done then the write back is, is performed at different instances, instances of time and that is controlled by with the help of uh, the uh, with the help of the uh, scoreboard by avoiding write after read type of hazards 
in both the cases whenever you perform right right operation. So, out of order completion uh, which may lead to WAR and W type of hazards are overcome uh, in CDC 6600 by stalling right uh, stall right to allow read operations to take place stall right to allow read operation to take place read registers only during read operant stage that means only after read operants are complete then it is done and later on we shall discuss about tomasulo's algorithm where register renaming was done register renaming has not been done in this uh, scoreboard and particularly uh, for wa type of hazards must detect hazard stall the issue stage until other complete so need to have multiple instruction in execution phase multiple execution in units or pipeline execution units they are same uh, i mean so far as the functionality is concerned so uh, the id stage is replaced by two stages i have already mentioned and scoreboard keeps track of dependencies st and state of operation that means monitors every change in hardware i mean uh, uh, whether execution is complete and also determines when to read operand when uh, when can execute and when can write back hazard detection and resolution is centralized as i have mentioned and it has got four stages of scoreboard control number one is issue it decode instructions and checks structural hazards as i have already told if a functional unit for the instruction is free and no other active instruction has the same destination register that means it keeps track of the already issued instructions and if if the already issued instructions has a destination register which is a source register of a particular instruction then it is stalled so uh, the scoreboard issues the instruction to the functional unit and updates the its in internal data structure. If a structural or WA type of has uh, WA uh, right after right hazard exists, then the instruction issue stalls. So, as I told, the solution for this uh, scoreboard is essentially stalling, and no further instruction will issue until these hazards are cleared. Then read operands. Uh, wait until no data hazards, then read operands. So, reading of operands is done in the second stage of instruction decode uh, and it, uh, it resolves that read after write type of hazards dynamically. A source operand is available if no earlier issued active instruction is going to write it or if the register containing the operand is being written by the currently active function unit. When the source operands are available, the scoreboard tells the function unit to proceed to read the operands from the registers and begin execution. The scoreboard resolves uh, read after write as I mentioned hazards dynamically in this step and instructions may be sent into execution out of order. So, uh, this is how uh, it is allowing uh, an out of order execution if operands are available. Then the uh, third stage is execution stage and operate on operands the function units begin execution upon receiving operands. When the result is ready and it noti notifies the scoreboard that it has completed execution. And finally, comes the write back stage, it finishes the execution by writing results into the registers, appropriate registers. So, once the scoreboard is aware that the function unit has completed execution, the scoreboard checks for uh, WA uh, write after read hazard, if none, it writes into the register in the result. So, you can see dynamically dynamically it overcomes uh, w, uh, write after uh, read type of hazard and writing is done only when this type of hazard is not available if wr uh, is then it stalls the instruction so in this particular example cdc 6600 scoreboard stall sub d until at the read operands that means you can see there is no true data dependency in this particular case it is reading an operand and it is being used here and it, it here it is writing that means it is a read after write type of operation so this reading uh, this sub d although there is no two data this the data dependency but there is a 
uh, right after read type of uh, uh, dependency, I mean uh, uh, that type of hazard can uh, occur. So, that is being overcome by stalling this instruction, served instruction until reading operation is completed uh, by the second instruction. So, this is done dynamically uh, with the help at the uh, right back stage. So, these are the four stages. Now, in addition to these stages, it has got uh, uh, three, three different uh, parts to maintain the database. So, first of all instruction status. So, which of the four steps of the instruction is in is a uh, uh, instruction is in. So, uh, for a for the instructions which have been issued, they can be in different stages instruction issue, reading operand, execution or write back. So, it keeps a it maintains a database about in which stage a particular instruction is in and then uh, functional unit status. It indicates the state of the functional unit, 9 fields for each functional unit. So, you can see database is quite complicated. So, that uh, different functional unit it has got there are 9 fields like busy, then operation to perform, operation can be uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, de, de, uh, divide and so on. Then FI, the destination register uh, for a particular functional unit and FJ and FK, they are source uh, register numbers and QJ and QK, functional units producing the source register. So, you can see not only it keeps track of the source register number, but which functional units will produce the result and write into the uh, registers that is also uh, uh, I mean maintained in this uh, database functional unit status database. And RJ and RK flags indicating when FJ and FK are ready and not yet read. That means, the, the functional units may be ready but the operands have not yet in bed read that that is being maintained with the help of this rj and rk flag bits so there are seven flag bits bz op fi fj fk qj qk and rj rk we shall see how they are being used when instructions are in flight and then you have got register result status so there are 32 registers and uh, from which functional units these registers are being written indicates which functional unit will write each register if one exists blank when no pending instruction will write into the registers. That means, the registers uh, will be written by some functional unit. So, uh, it, it is keeping track of which functional unit will write into which register. So, this is the database that is being maintained and you can see this is the detailed scoreboard uh, control pipeline control these are the uh, that this is the instruction status and it will wait until uh, function units are not available and results are not available only when function units are available and results are available instructions are issued and uh, the various bookkeeping that is being done that means, to maintain those, uh, those uh, you know that 7 flag bits that is being shown here. So, busy, OP, FI, FJ, FK, QJ, QK, RJ, RK and how they are, how they are uh, getting the, uh, of, uh, the results and doing the necessary bookkeeping and it is read the read operands RJ and RK uh, no or yes that is being done wait until the, ready, uh, the these are available and execution complete that functional unit is whenever execution is complete a functional unit is released and uh, so if, if it is not busy a functional unit is re released then uh, and here is the uh, write result how when the writing of result has to be delayed that is being mentioned here and uh, there are various conditions uh, it, it will be it will do the bookkeeping bookkeeping and wait until the results can be written in activated registers and as a consequence what we, what is being done 
particularly the in the issue stage w a w type of hazards are overcome and in the write back stage w a r type of hazards are overcome and of course that uh, the most common type read after write that that hazards which are essentially representing true data dependency those hazards hazards are overcome by stalling because if operands are not available then uh, stalling has to be done if function and units are not available that is your structural hazard then stalling has to be done so these are being done let us <coughs> and for cdc 6600 cdc 6600 there was improvement of uh, 1.7 factor of 1.7 improvement for fortran and 2.5 for hand coded assembly and of course this was done as i mentioned before main memory or cache memory i mean cache memory were available and for cdc 6600 surprisingly the hardware was not very complex only equivalent to a single functional unit however one very disadvantage is that large number of buses needed we have seen even for five functional unit you have got a large number of buses because you have to do parallel uh, reading and writing so number of buses is quite large however if we want to issue multiple instructions per clock more wires are needed in any case so central ha central ha centralized hardware for hard hazard reservation then another thing is the scoreboard effectively handles true data dependencies minimizes the number of stalls due to true data dependencies and anti dependencies and output dependencies are also handled using stalls and uh, we have seen which is done by the issue and write back stages <coughs> now let us consider and illustrate the operation with the help of an example and to illustrate the example we shall consider that load has a uh, 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 one cycle latency and add d and sub uh, additions and subtraction has two cycles latency multiply has got 10 cycle latency and divide has got 40 cycles latency some realistic numbers have been taken just to illustrate the example now here is the scoreboard uh, where you can see there are three stages instruction status functional unit status and register result status and Uh, these are the instructions to be executed load uh, if, uh, there are two loads followed by multiplication subtraction division addition so these are the instructions uh, essentially the straight line code instructions which is a which is a basic block it cannot operate beyond basic block so these are the instructions to be executed and right now your uh, the, uh, the the instruction status function in status register result status all are empty now let us start execution with the help of scoreboard so after first cycle the this instruction is issued so here it shows it, it has been issued and functional unit status shows that uh, this uh, the uh, that integer unit uh, has become busy so it is yes it is busy and instruction to be performed operation to be performed is load and destination register here is f6 so f6 is uh, written here and the source register is r2 so you can see how the uh, database is updated uh, as you go to the cycle number 1 and uh, here uh, the functional unit that is busy that register result status uh, here f6 so it will come from the integer unit so functional unit which will produce the result is shown here so that is after the first cycle and after second cycle uh, you can the operation the, the this particular uh, operation uh, that second that op uh, that operand read operands has taken place for in the second cycle but cannot issue i q because integer unit is busy it has got only one integer unit and so the load the second load instruction cannot be unfortunately issued because Uh, uh here it has lead to a kind of structural hazard 
So, because of this structural hazard in a second cycle, the second instructions cannot be issued. So, uh, next instruction due to uh, due to in order issue. Okay. So, so it has not an, an nothing much has changed except it has the, this particular status has changed. So, you go to the third cycle execution is completed and execution is completing because it requires two instruction and you can see uh, how the status is being changed uh, here. Uh, I mean and not much has been changed compared to previous thing, uh, but uh, only this has changed. Then it has gone to the write back stage, it will write result into F 6 and after the writing of result you can see uh, here that uh, that functional unit is no longer written here, because now the functional unit is released after it has completed that functional unit is released. Uh, and after it has completed the writing of result into the appropriate register R 6. So, here uh, it is not also shown. Now, now it will it, we shall go to the fifth cycle. As we go to the fifth cycle, the uh, second load instruction is issued and second load instruction is issued and you can see here uh, that F 2 is the register in which result will be written. So, functional unit is integer functional unit and the F 2 register uh, will be written by this functional units and inter is unit unit is again busy, it is performing this load operation and the destination register is F 2 and source register is R 3 uh, and uh, this R k is yes uh, as it is shown here. And now, let us go to the fifth cycle, sixth cycle. Now, here you see the third instruction has been issued, uh, because there is no true data dependency and functional unit required is different. So, here it requires a multi, uh, multiplier. So, since the multiplier uh, is become busy now and various, uh, various uh, components like destination register, source register and various other things are filled up uh, appropriately in this database and uh, this uh, re re result register status is also properly maintained. So, it has gone to the sixth cycle, now uh, it will go to the seventh cycle, in the seventh cycle it will proceed to uh, I mean sequentially offer and read it has completed, execution it is it will complete. And it will also now issue the uh, the uh, fourth instruction because we have got one uh, multi divide so uh, uh, that, that subtraction so we that integer uh, that uh, that add, add are, th this is available now so this uh, this is this particular functional unit is now getting busy and corresponding fields of the those seven fields are being filled up appropriately, operation to be performed, destination register, source register and so on. And you can see various registers uh, uh, I mean which will be written by different function units are maintained by this register result status. So, this is the clock cycle 7. Now, we go to the clock cycle 8, as we go to the clock cycle 8 that integer unit will complete its execution it will write the result into the register F 2. So, you can see here no longer uh, there is a mention about the integer unit and integer unit has become busy free. So, here it is not yes, it is no longer busy. So, integer unit is now free, uh, but it has already issued uh, the, the remaining three instructions. They will be in different stages of completion, because they are we have seen that multiplication takes uh, longer time. Now, uh, let us see, although the instruction multiplier multiplication double instruction was issued, but F 2 and F 4 you see F it was waiting for the result for uh, to be written by the second instruction. So, it did not read the operands uh, until this writing was complete. So, in the next cycle if we go you will see it will read the operand. So, it has read the operand 
because uh, now the uh, I3 and I4 reads the operands because F2 is now available. So earlier F2 was not available till the uh, eighth cycle, but in the eighth cycle the writing uh, write back operation has been completed, and it is now the operands are now available, and you can see both these instructions where F2 is the source operand uh, are now reading their operands. So, they will go to the second uh, stage of the pipeline that is your read operands. And, <coughs> and this sub D yeah both of them will, will do that and here accordingly you can see the multiplication and division these are in progress and add is is not yet released that this this uh, this particular so these three are in execution now and accordingly where the operands will be written are mentioned multiplier will write on into f0 adder will write into f8 and divide will write into f10 so so we shall go to now cycle 11 in 11 it it completes the operation and writing of the result takes place in F8 and uh, this other things because this multi this, this this one multiplier and divide divide will take more number of cycles. So, this multiplication will continue. So, we shall go to the 12th cycle we have skipped few cycles and only in the 12th cycle this uh, this particular instruction uh, sub uh, that uh, uh, th this particular instruction execution is complete. So, it has read its operand in 9th cycle execution it will take 2 cycles. So, in 12th cycle the, uh, uh, the result is, is written, written into register F8 and then you will see the it can be issued uh, that, uh, that this instruction can be issued in the next cycle. So, this instruction has been issued in the next cycle because operands are now available. So, all the instructions have been issued now and they will be in different stages of execution. The first uh, the first two instruction and uh, this instruction execution has been completed. So, you see that out of order uh, execution has taken place, out of order completion has also taken place, but uh, writing of results has been uh, done very uh, uh, I mean carefully such that the hazards are overcome. So, this is the 14 cycle now the operands are available it will read the operands and in the 15 cycle uh, add the takes 2 cycles. So, no change and we shall be uh, add the completes and but multiplication and divide will go on it will take several cycles it will continue. multiplication completes after 10 cycles. So, uh, in the 20th cycle multiplication is complete, but division will continue and accordingly uh, these are the corresponding databases are updated. So, scoreboard example after 21 you can see only except divide and add D all uh, executions are complete and add D is also completing in uh, cycle 22 and only divide is left out. So, we have skipped large number of cycles because 40 cycles are needed by divide. So, accordingly we have skipped a number of cycles. So, in the we shall go to the 61st 61 cycle it is completing and now it will write the result into the register. So, all the everything has been done execution is now finished. So, we have seen uh, how the uh, execution has been completed. We have already discussed this and uh, I shall briefly mention about the limitations of the scoreboard. Uh, we have seen that the amount of parallelism available among the instructions is very restricted. The reason for that is it is resting a, restricting its window only to the basic block of a program and we have seen that the within the basic block the instruction level parallelism is very much restricted and as a consequence it cannot really give you very good result, the performance cannot be improved much. And 
second is the number of scoreboard entries uh, uh, that is window is not beyond branch. So, if the execution can be completed beyond branch, then the that, that window of where the, the, the instructions which are considered by scoreboard is taken will can be completed, but unfortunately the number of entries in the scoreboard is very limited because of the limited size of window. <coughs> the number of and types of functional units. So, the number and types of functional units has to be de de uh, dependent on the instruction level parallelism available and the window size. There is no fun in having very large number of functional units. Uh, because uh, that may overcome the structural hazard, but because of the other type of other three types of hazards, there may be stalls and performance improvement cannot be much. So, the number and types of functional units are to be carefully chosen and the presence of anti dependencies and output dependencies we have already seen uh, because the the anti dependencies and output dependencies ari are arising because of out of order execution and they are tackled by scoreboard with the help of uh, with the by stalling the uh, stalling the uh, cycle uh, stalling by introducing stalling cycles and that is how the scoreboard uh, is performing so in the next uh, class or maybe uh, subsequently we shall discuss about that the another dynamic instruction scheduling approach that is Tomasulo's approach which was developed for IBM 360 and that is more sophisticated and we shall see uh, how it overcomes some of the limitations of this scoreboard. Thank you.